Hey, welcome back. In this video, I am just going over the basic method on how to solve a typical 3D statics problem. So in most 3D statics problems, we'll have some object like this green thing here that's attached to a wall or something. Um, and the generally the object will have some forces acting on it like this. And we'll be asked to usually find what is what are all of the reactions at the connection. So say if it's at point A, uh, then we'll have a maximum of six reactions that can happen where the first of the three reactions are the force reactions, so we have AX, AY, and AZ, and then the other three reactions are the moment or the couple reactions, so we'll have MAX, MAY, and MAZ. If this reaction is a fixed rigid connection, then it will have it will be able to provide all six of these, but if it's something else, uh, it will it will provide less. Like if this is a ball and socket connection, it will only provide the three force reactions and none of the couple reactions. Or if it's a hinge, it will be some combination of the two depending on which way the hinge axis lines up with. So to begin solving for this problem for the reactions at point A, then we need to have the sum of forces in the x, y, and z direction and the sum of moments about the x, y, and z axes. So to get the expressions for the sum of forces in the x, y, and z directions, it's pretty easy. For example, for the x direction, you just come and take the x component of every force that appears, including the applied forces and the connection, and just sum them up and set it to zero. And then we do the exact same thing for the sum of forces in the y direction, just taking the y component of all of the applied forces and the reaction. And then we do the exact same thing again for the z direction. Now, to get the three expressions that we need for the sum of moments about the x, y, and z axes, what we need to do is actually, we'll come down here, and in one step, we'll actually combine, we'll combine all three of these into one equation for the sum of moments about some point. Now, in these types of problems, that point that you pick is almost always going to be the, the connection that we're looking at. So in this case, we would do point A. Sometimes you might want to pick the origin, but in this case, it's on the origin. Um, the reason is, is when we come through, we need to sum, similarly how we summed up all the x components for the sum of forces in the x direction and y components for sum of moments in the y direction. In this case, we're just going to sum all of the moments about A as they are. So uh, when we look at this, we can see that there's actually, there'll be three moments that are caused, if this is a rigid fixed connection, that are caused by the reaction. And... Uh, well, there's also three other moments that would be caused about point A, and those are all the moments that are caused because of these forces. So uh, if you recall, actually here, I should just write it. Um, for When we have an applied force on an object, the moment about some point A, about the moment about some point, let's say A, would be equal to um, the position vector from that point A to the, the where the line of action of the force passes through the object. So basically we're applying the force. Uh, and then we have the cross product and we cross it against the force itself. Um, so knowing that, what we need to do is we would, in this problem, we would just find out what all of these position vectors are. And typically on these 3D statics problems, these position vectors are all really easy to find because you would know the length of this section, you would know the length of this section, and you would know the length of this section and adding those all together, you'd be able to um, come up with these position vectors from A. The reason I said earlier that it might be beneficial to do it from the origin is if for some reason the geometry, uh, you know, if we're doing it from the origin and we have these coordinates, then we'd be able just to use the coordinates themselves as the position vectors from the origin. So anyway, so this would be R, uh, R1, this would be R2, and this would be R3. All right, so now, like I said, when we go here to find the sum of moments about point A, this will have actually built into it. It will have, because this is 3D, it'll have the X component, the Y component, and the Z component all built into it. So first we would have the sum of, uh, we would have, the sum of moments about A would be, we just add up these three moments in here. So we have M A X plus M A Y plus M A Z. Uh, the awesome thing about doing it about uh, solving for this, using the point, or f solving for the moments about the point where your reaction is, or your connection is, is that we don't have to worry about including AX, AY, and AZ in the e equation because the lines of actions of all these forces pass right through that point, and so they're not actually going to cause a moment about that point. So that's usually actually the, the reason why we would pick this location. Um, and then, so that's three moments, and then there's three other moments that are uh, being caused about the point A, and that's the one from force one, force two, and force three, so we would just add in those moments using this method that we have up here, so it would just be R1 
cross F1, and then R2 cross F2, and then plus R3, that's a 3, cross F3. Okay, and this is all going to be equal to zero because this is in static equilibrium. Uh, actually, I forgot to write it up here, but these two will also all be equal to zero because this is all in static equilibrium. Uh, basically, when you come through and solve this, these will still be unknowns, MAX, MAY, and MZ, um, because that's originally what we're looking for in the problem. But uh, when you do the cross product and then you mix it all together, we'll actually end up with an answer that looks like something like this once we, once we condense this and simplify it a little bit. Uh, sorry, that's uh, sum of moments about A. We'll end up getting some giant vector here that's like something plus, actually, you know, it'll be like uh, M a x plus something plus something or minus or times like there'll just be some ex expression here that includes m a x there'll be another expression down here that includes m a y oops m a y you know plus or minus something and then there'll be another expression down here that will include m a z plus that plus that and these could be anything uh, but this will be an expression and and this is all going to be equal to zero and basically what we do is once we have that, then we can pull out these individual lines. So we can pull out this line, we can pull out this line, and then we pull out this line. So this whole top line here, because this is the sum of moments about point A, this is a 3D thing, uh, this is this, the first line here is just the X component of this sum of moments about A. And that basically just means that the, the X component about the sum of moments of this 3D problem is just the sum of moments about the X axes and then we would put in this entire expression. So that would include that term MAX, and then it would also include the rest of whatever that expression is, and that would all be equal to zero. Uh, we would do the same thing down here. We would just pull out this middle line, and this is actually the Y component of the sum of moments about A, which is also just the same as the sum of moments about the Y axis. Uh, so then we would have that, it would include that term where we have MAY, and you know, plus a bunch of other stuff, whatever is written in here, uh, zero. And then same thing, the third line is just the sum of moments about the z-axis. And we would have that variable, of whatever showing up there, maz, plus whatever the rest of the expression is, and that's all equal to zero. Uh, once we get to that point, we actually have, here, I'm going to draw a box around it. Uh, we have three equations of equilibrium right there. Oops, I should probably make that a bit nicer color. Um, there we have three equations of equilibrium, and here we have also the other three equations of equilibrium, so that's our six equations of equilibrium, and from there you will be able to just substitute, there'll be enough information in here that you can just substitute in values and solve these systematically one at a time. So this is all a little bit abstract without looking at the numbers per se, but you'll see in the next couple videos when I'm actually doing examples with real numbers, that this is the method that I'm generally following. So that's how you solve a typical statics 3D problem. And I will see you guys in the next videos, and it will hopefully make a lot more sense then.